What's up everybody, Superworks fan here for another weekly update. So, what's new with the Mustang? Well, nothing at all, it hasn't been driven much because I did drive the Buick a fair amount this past week uh, that I had it and I will be getting the new Cadillac CT6 here to drive for the next week and so that'll be uh, nice to have. So this will continue to get another break here for another week and then uh, I'll be driving it daily as I don't have any press cars scheduled after the CT6 um, in the immediate future. So, um, yeah, and I'm going to be putting the snow tires on this if you missed last week's weekly update I'll be putting the snow tires on this here probably next week and uh, getting that all set up so it's ready to go for winter time here and I uh, will be daily driving it here you know during the winter whenever I don't have press cars so um, yeah it should be an interesting experience here but honestly I mean it was pouring down rain last night and it, it does fine even in the rain I put it in the wet mode that the premiums have here uh, and that kind of you know delays throttle response and makes all the traction control systems and stability control a little more sensitive which certainly helps with stability and things like that you know, whenever the roads are slick and and stuff um, but the only other thing about the Mustang is I really can't wait for the Detroit Auto Show it's about you know five weeks away and that's when I'm expecting to see the 2018 Mustang um, it may be the New York Auto Show which would be you know in March and that would be even later but most likely they'll be showing the revised you know 2018 Mustang here at the uh, you know North American International Auto Show which is in Detroit in January and um, so I really just need to see that because I really want to hurry up and make up my mind about whether I'm going to keep this or trade up for a 2018 or you know some kind of bullet or Mach 1 if they do something like that and so I'm just like really antsy. The reason why I want to hurry up and decide about, you know, whether I'm going to keep this or trade up for a new one is because I'm starting to get the mod itch. Uh, and not for anything performance related really. Uh, you know, I learned my lesson with the EcoBoost. I'm keeping my full factory warranty in place and not messing with the motor or anything like that. Um, the, the mod itch that I'm getting is for exterior mods because uh, I love the looks of this, but there are a few little things I want to do to enhance it. I'd really love to do uh, quarter window louvers uh, I think those look really good here some of the new ones they've been coming out with recently um, and uh, so that I'm tossing around the idea of lowering springs because I really like the way the EcoBoost sat on the cob lowering springs and so I'm um, thinking about doing some kind of lowering springs here for the GT uh, at some point next year and I also want to do window tint that's something I've been putting off but something I've been wanting to do for a while is window tint um, and also tinting probably some of the lights on the car I'm not sure to what degree yet but I want to do probably some kind of tinting there on the little corners of the headlights and then uh, you know tinting the taillights slightly or part of the taillights. There's a bunch of different designs and options out there so I'm not totally set but just a few little things just to sharpen it up a little bit and make it look a little different than every other you know Mustang GT on the lot. I will not be doing wheels. I know that people still ask that a lot. If you watch my in-depth tour video of the GT when I first got it I explained why I love these wheels. They remind me of the torque thrust from the bullet uh, you know car and so I love these wheels that's one of the reasons why I bought this particular car is because of these wheels and so the wheels are definitely staying um so, but yeah, like I said, just a, got the mod, just do a couple little things here. Not planning on doing an exhaust. The more that I drive this again, the more that I'm really happy with the stock exhaust. And uh, maybe that'll change next year, I don't know. But as of right now, no plans to do any kind of exhaust, as boring as that sounds. But uh, yeah, so that's really all the updates here on the Mustang, guys. So I'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news. Right, for this week's news, the first thing is we have more pictures of the new Toyota Supra and it's really getting close to production now and getting really, really exciting. So they're starting to peel away some of the camo. Those weird taillights in the back are now gone. Um, so basically, uh, you know, it's looking like it's going to have more FT1 cues than we originally thought. Uh, so let's just start with the front end, though. It has that strange nose still that has the little pointy bit there in the middle that kind of, you know, harkens to the FT1, but that it was just like a lot more pointy and looked like a Formula One car or something. This is just like a random little like bump on its nose kind of deal. And so hopefully that gets smoothed out and you know hopefully the camouflage is just deceiving us as far as you know what's going on with that front bumper. Um, another thing is the headlights, which almost look retro 90s-ish still um, in their shape and design. And uh, you know, usually these days headlights are a lot more complex and you know interesting looking. So not sure if those are still just dummy units for this mule or what. But uh, it's, it actually does look a lot like a Mark IV Super there in the front in a lot of ways. So very cool. The dimensions are also still, you know, fairly small. 
The big news, though, I think is in the back end um, because you have uh, what appears to be a large ducktail type uh, deck lid there for the spoiler, and it also has some different taillights. They got rid of those weird taillights um, like we expected them to, and these taillights that are in its place, now they look similar to like a Supra and style taillight, and they're the correct shape, uh, similar to the FT1, but I still don't think the taillight internals are, you know, the correct ones because they're overly simple and, um, you know, especially looking at the FT1 concept and all other production cars currently that have more complex taillights, I'm assuming that it's going to be more than just basic little LED units there. So, you know, I still don't think we're looking at a finished product, but we're getting closer to a finished product. There's no word as to when we will finally see a Supra. People keep calling this the 2018 model though, which means if it is in fact a 2018 model, then it needs to really, I think the latest they would debut would be the Geneva Motor Show in March. Um, it could be sooner. They could be, you know, debuting it next month. Um, in Detroit. Not sure, but hopefully it's soon because, I mean, the weight has just been killing all of us. Other details. Now, the rumors are saying that it could use a turbocharged four-cylinder engine from the Toyota lineup, um, but we also know that, you know, they do, they do a lot of part sharing with BMW because this car has, this new Supra was co-developed with the new BMW Z5 that's going to be coming out that's a convertible. And um, so, you know, we were hearing that it could use either a straight inline six uh, from, you know, one of the turbocharged ones that BMW currently offers, or it could use... Uh, uh, you know, a twin turbo V6 that Lexus is developing for their new flagship engine and could have one of those. Um, but it could also have, you know, a smaller four cylinder, I'm sure for, a, you know, more, uh, I guess a luxury model or a more, you know, basic model that's a little bit more affordable. Um, you know, so interesting to hear all that. We'll just have to wait and see what finally happens, but very exciting to see that. Another exciting car that was spied this past week was the new Corvette ZR1. Now we've seen plenty of spy shots of the ZR1 already, but usually it had bulky camouflage there on the front. Now we can see that front end in all its glory with its all those lines in the hood there, and uh, you know the front bumper looks very angry and aggressive. Um, and so that front end is really the biggest uh, news here as far as these new spy shots go. And the hood, now if you remember the old ZR1s had a clear spot in the hood where you could see the blower, and even the new uh, ZL1 Camaro has a similar type thing. And I think that the camouflage is hiding that, but I think that that middle portion there. There, um, that's separate from the rest of the hood, I think will be hopefully clear and show off the large supercharger that will inevitably be under the hood here. They're saying, you know, around 700 horsepower at least um, is the rumor. Uh, there's no guarantees here, but that's what we've been hearing. And, um, you know, it's obviously, uh, you can see in the back there has a very aggressive spoiler as well. Two actually, two different spoilers um, that they've been testing here as they've been driving around. So there's probably going to be two different models, probably like a more intense like track pack version and then just a less sporty ZR1, I guess. Um, so uh, very, very exciting to see that. And that also sounds like a 2018 model. So we're hearing that will be unveiled next month at Detroit. Um, so that'll be uh, probably the showstopper there for Chevy as far as, you know, auto show news goes uh, at the North American International Auto Show next month. Um, another thing that was spied, but Rolls-Royce sent the spy shots out. They just sent uh, two uh, images of their new Project Culligan, or Cullinan, which is their SUV that they've been developing. Um, and so we just have two pictures of it with the swirly camouflage on. They're going to be doing more testing I guess in the Arctic with these this winter and then uh, I guess later next year they're going to be testing them in the Middle East for extreme heat conditions. So don't expect this anytime soon. Uh, maybe a reveal late next year uh, is the guess or early the following year of 2018. Um, so but cool to see that it looks very impressive there and um, anyway another SUV that was spied lots of spy shots this past week was the 2018 Porsche Cayenne which was uh, you know spied undergoing testing here in a snowy climate and you um, you know, looks uh, similar to the current Cayenne, but it's actually going to be totally new underneath and uh, be riding on the new MLB platform that the Audi uh, Q7 is going to be on, or is currently on, actually. And that platform allows for a lot of weight loss. In the Q7, it lost 500 pounds. So they're guessing that the new Cayenne could lose a good amount of weight as well, which will just make the performance even more insane than it already is, you know, with the Cayenne Turbo S and all those models. And they're assuming that it's probably going to have most of the same engines as well uh, that will carry over for the most part, uh, including the hybrid version and whatnot. And um, they're saying that that should be arriving sometime towards the end of uh, the next year here. And so uh, very cool to see that. And those taillights in the back, don't be too disturbed by those. Clearly, again, just development units there. And it's most likely going to have taillights very, very similar to that of the Macan and the Panamera uh, whenever it finally does come out. Another car that had an image leak this past week was the 
the Kia GT or whatever they're going to be calling that. So, you know, there's the GT concept that debuted in Frankfurt about five years ago, and um, it's finally now just looks like it's coming to production here very soon. Um, you know, we're seeing just an image that was leaked from a factory that's building them or whatever. Um, and so this is going to be riding on the same platform that will most likely be underpinning the new Genesis G70, which is the uh, Genesis Hyundai's brand, uh, their new three series fighter. And so that's, you know, what we're looking at is this is the Kia version because of course Hyundai and Kia are, uh, you know, the same company there, you know, or they work together. And so, um, they're saying this platform is going to be rear-wheel drive based for this new Kia GT, which is a good starting point. And it's also going to have a variety of engines that could reach all the way up to 400 horsepower. Um, and so that 400 horsepower model would most likely be a tuned version of the twin turbo 3.3 liter V6 that Hyundai currently puts in the Genesis uh, G90 that does 365 horsepower. And uh, it's also going to be in the G80 Sport we just learned last week. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it looks good. It looks a lot like the concept. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a BMW 4 Series GT. T, um, you know, Grand Coupe kind of deal, and so looks really cool though. And uh, curious to see what the inside looks like, and you know, see what they price these things at. But uh, very exciting there, nonetheless. Another thing that was unveiled officially this past week was the 2018 Ford Fiesta. Now, this is the European version. We didn't get a U.S. reveal. That'll probably be happening in Detroit next month as well. And so, although it's not the U.S. version, we will see most of this styling, I assume, for the U.S. version here. Probably not all the same models. But one interesting thing, speaking about the models, is a new Active model, which exactly like the Chevrolet Spark Active that just was announced last week again. Um, this is, you know, just basically giving a little bit of body cladding, an extra, like, half inch of ground clearance, and, uh, you know, roof rack, essentially, and a little bit more aggressive styling, and uh, they'll badge it as a crossover. And so, um, that's what, uh, you know, we're seeing here is this Active active trim uh, and then as far as the inside goes it's going to have the same 8 inch display the new one that we saw in the Ford Echo Sport whenever that uh, debuted here in LA a couple weeks ago and so because of that it's going to have a lot of the same interior as that Echo Sport and that includes it's going to have an optional Bang & Olufsen play system by Harman um, which is the new optional Ford systems that all that not all but uh, most 2018 models will probably be offering we know it's confirmed for the Echo Sport and the Fiesta which are the least of the Ford model, so we're assuming that all the other upper range Ford models will also be receiving that nice sound system, and uh, fingers crossed the Mustang will get it as well, but we're not totally sure on that as as of yet. And um, other things though, they say this is the most technologically advanced uh, compact car yet. It's going to have uh, dual moonroofs as an option, all kinds of safety tech uh, that you can get, and a lot of stuff that's even standard. And uh, so yeah, we'll have to wait for more details and pricing on the new Fiesta here once it's officially unveiled in the U.S., but exciting to see that nonetheless. McLaren this past Last week unveiled a new uh, 570s track pack which uh you know amps things up a little bit over the standard 570s and um so you know they swapped the leather upholstery out for alcantara um the standard seats are replaced with carbon fiber style uh, racing units and uh it also has lighter wheels and all these improvements help to shave 55 pounds off the weight of the 570s and uh, i mean it was already a fairly lightweight vehicle um and they also have a wing that is now 12 millimeters tall taller than the standard version um, and produces an extra 64 pounds of downforce at 150 miles per hour. And um, another cool thing about this track pack though that's included is it comes with McLaren's track tel telemetry system which um, it records lap time, sector time splits, and logs uh, data as well for analyzing your performance on the track and things like that. It also has a, a roof painted in dark palladium to separate it from the lesser you know, 570s's and also has a stealthier finish for the exhaust. Austin wheels and so this whole package is available now for ordering and delivery in 2017 and uh, it's gonna cost around uh, 20,000 bucks or so so not cheap uh, but you know it's McLaren after all so it's almost to be expected but cool improvements nonetheless another thing this past week is that Audi has renamed the Quattro uh, division which is their you know sporty performance division is now going to be called Audi Sport um, and so that's just simply because I think there's a lot of confusion people were hearing Audi Quattro and thinking oh you mean the all-wheel drive system no we mean the like AMG uh, you know arm I guess you could call it uh, for Audi you know so now it's gonna be called Audi Sport and um, that makes a whole lot more sense and with uh, this name change announcement this past week, they also reiter reiterated what uh, I mentioned either a week or two ago where they're saying that they're going to release eight new cars, eight new RS models in the next 18 months. Um, so they already have you know several RS models already out, and they're responsible for all of those. Um, and the RS3 is obviously...
obviously the most recent one that just debuted. Um, but you know, we're not sure, you know, what other models are going to be coming. If you include all the variants of the assumed RS4 that's coming, uh, and the RS5, that already gives you about five models there with all the different variants of those. Um, and so inside, aside from that, you know, what else could we be looking at? Probably an RS version of the R8, uh, to kind of compete with the Huracan Superleggera or Performante, whatever they end up calling that, uh, that we've seen spied in the past. Um, so it could be, you know, something like that. It could be in the pipeline, uh, as well as a convertible version of that. So there's two more models and then maybe one other uh, model in there. Not really sure, but, um, cool to see that nonetheless. Other German luxury performance car news is that uh, Mercedes um, Autoblog actually got to sit down with um, the boss of Mercedes AMG, Tobias Moores, and they talked with him about future products and stuff. And um, he confirmed that an AMG GTC Coupe is definitely happening. So we just saw the GTC Roadster, which was unveiled, which is a wide body, higher performance, higher horsepower version of the AMG GT. Now there will be a standard AMG GT, you know, convertible Roadster, but this GTC model um, is one step above the GTS model uh, as confusing as all that is and so the GTC you know was only available or only announced in Roadster so far but they confirmed a coupe is coming uh, we'll probably see it at the Geneva Motor Show uh, if not sooner and um, so that's good news and then the Autoblog also asked him about any kind of GTR convertible because you know that was unveiled this past year here the uh, new GTR high performance model and um, they're not sure they're not you know they said they've been talking about doing a GTR convertible but they're not sure just yet. Uh, most likely they will end up doing one, um, but you know, it's not a guaranteed thing yet. But um, cool to see that. And uh, other things as far as AMG goes, they also did a little bit of speculating about the price and they announced um, some of the pricing for Europe and then applying those same percentages of you know increase to the american stuff it's it's rumored or you know, it's guessed here that the 2018 amg G, amg gt roadster should start around 120,000 um and then the gtc the you know higher performing roadster that we've already seen should be around 155,000 and then the gtr coupe that you know was also unveiled this past year um is going to be probably around 160,000 again just estimates um but sounds about right i think for you know, the kind of performance and you know what you're getting there with those uh, compared with other Mercedes and whatnot. So uh, interesting to hear that. Another interesting thing that was uh, leaked, well not, not leaked, but I guess I should say put out this past week is Volkswagen released a sketch and it's a sketch as it's supposed to be a teaser for the Geneva Auto Show um, here early next year where they will be showing off the Volkswagen Arteon, I think is how you say that. Um, and so uh, it's basically the Volkswagen CC replacement, but it's going to be um, higher end and it's also going to kind of fill in for the Phaeton as well. And uh, so it's going to be a little bit higher end, but it's also, they said it's going to have the same awesome, you know, cool, great looks. Uh, you know, coupe looks that the CC had, but they said they're going to try and, you know, not have the compromises that the current CC has had with, you know, limited rear headspace and, you know, cramped back seat and cramped uh, luggage area. And so they want to fix all those things. Also, of course, you know, bring the styling up and really make it aggressive and a showpiece and be the new Halo model for Volkswagen. And should also have some pretty cool tech on the inside as well, a new heads up display that's really, I guess, uh, impressive and things like that. But we'll have to wait to see all that at uh, Geneva next year. In the meantime, we have a sketch to give us a general idea of the side profile there, and that's it. Speaking about interesting tech, though, uh, Elon Musk this past week uh, tweeted out, he's very casual with the way he drops info and uh, all that. So anyway, someone asked him on Twitter about when uh, the new hardware for the Model S will be activated because, you know, they kind of disabled autopilot until they revalidated everything, um, and they were going to, you know, get that rolled out as soon as possible. And Elon Musk tweeted back at this guy and said it's going to be about three weeks, and it will all get rolled out, and then they're going to have... Uh, uh, incremental monthly releases so these teslas will be updated every month now apparently with the new features and you know just bug improvements all that kind of stuff kind of like a smartphone and um so, but this 8.1 update, which is what uh, Elon Musk is talking about here, um, is going to be kicking off the new enhanced autopilot features, um, which includes the Tesla Vision system, which is this new hardware that they're installing in all uh, Teslas, I believe, um, and then you have to pay to either activate it whenever the car is being built or activate it later on down the road for more money. Um, and so the tech that's included includes eight surround cameras, 
12 updated ultrasonic sensors, and a forward-facing radar, um, which of course reads all that kind of stuff to give it all those autopilot capabilities. But this enhanced autopilot, it's it gets it just they keep upping it more and more, and I just I can't help but really view them as the visionary for autonomous driving, and they're really kind of I guess forwarding the charge for this. So. Here's what they say on the Tesla site about this enhanced autopilot. It says your, te your Tesla will match speed to traffic conditions. It'll keep within its lane. It's going to automatically change lanes without requiring driver input, which is a new thing. Um, also, it's going to transition from one freeway to another seamlessly. Exit the freeway when your destination is near. Self-park when near a parking spot and be summoned to and from your garage. And then the plan down the road is to uh, make these Teslas that are equipped with this software to be fully autonomous. And they, they say that they want to have fully autonomous driving by the end of 2017 as far as the capabilities for that. But uh, that's, of course, they said the disclaimer is that it's subject to regulatory approval because, as you know, all the lawmakers and whatnot are very hesitant to just let these cars start driving themselves all over the place. But we know that the dream is eventually for these Teslas to be able to meet you and go anywhere in the country on their own and so, you know, you can fly somewhere and then your car will meet you out there and it'll stop and charge itself because they know that they're developing these supercharging stations where the arms are automatic and plug into the car all on their own. So these cars will do everything, literally everything, which is just mind blowing. But uh, it sounds like it's not too far away. And, um, you know, all the other car makers here seem to be joining in with the autonomous thing and really want to make it even a, a relatively affordable thing by as soon as 2020. So those of us that enjoy driving, I mean, I don't think that right will be taken away from us anytime soon. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a whole lot of autonomous stuff out there very, very soon. So life as we know it will be changing, I think, relatively quickly here in the next few years. And so pretty crazy to see that. And the last piece of news this past week is that uh, Maserati, um, there's some new information about the Alfieri, which is the two-seater um, that they are working on that's going to be coming here in 2019. So Just Auto, uh, this one publication called Just Auto, they sat down with Maserati and they were talking about Maserati building an EV and uh, Maserati is saying how they're going to be making an electric version of the Alfieri, an all-electric version. Um, they're going to be first making the V6 version. They're going to have it like a twin-turbo V6 version. They're going to do a V8, but now because of the emissions regulations being stricter and stricter, they're doing a twin-turbo V6 instead. Could be similar to what you see in the Alfa Romeo, uh, Giulia, you know, Quadrifoglio. Not sure, but um, they're saying that as far as the Alfieri's size and stuff, they say that it's going to be designed to be a competitor to the 911, but it'll be a larger car than the 911. They said more around the size of an F-type Jag. Um, which should be great. You know, I mean, the F-Type is uh, really, really impressive, but more competition can't hurt. And so um, cool to hear that. And the gasoline version will go on sale in 2019, most likely as a 2020 model. And then um, the electric version will go on sale a year later in 2020 as a 2021 model. So still a ways off there, uh, but very exciting. Hopefully it keeps the same awesome good looks that the concept had from, you know, many years back. Um, and uh, so, yeah, no other details, you know, as far as you know, when they would be priced or anything like that. Um, but very interesting to hear that nonetheless. But anyway, that's it for all the news this week, guys. I'll send it back to me in the car. All right, so I'll leave you guys with a nice low acceleration here like I always do. <laughs> yeah, this thing, <laughs> it's squirrely though. Oh, I love it. This is so much fun. And I love uh, the way that it just, you know, the front end lifts up and it just takes off. It's always fun. But anyway, uh, thank you guys very much for watching the weekly update. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.